Good morning. It's good to be with you on this Wednesday morning. We're taking a look today at our Confession of Faith, our Statement of Confession. This week, we're using the Heidelberg Catechism, and we're looking at question 32. Question 32 has a uh, particular question for all believers to consider, and the question is this, believers in Jesus, what do we believe? Why are you called a Christian? And the answer, because I am a member of Christ by faith and thus share in his anointing, so that I may as prophet confess his name, as priest present myself a living sacrifice of thankfulness to him, and as king fight with a free and good conscience against sin and the devil in this life, and hereafter reign with him eternally over all creatures. This is why we're called a Christian. We're not called a Christian, of course, because we joined some club uh, we're not called a Christian because of any kind of works we've done where we have earned our way into the faith. We're not called a Christian because we think more or more highly of ourselves than anywhere else. We're called a Christian because Christ has named us his own. Christ has declared us to belong to him. He has purchased us with his blood shed on the cross, and so we belong to him. And so our declaring ourselves to be a Christian is not declaring ourselves to be a Christian, Rather, it's just a recognition of what Christ has done for us and the status we now have as believers, as members of the family of God, as followers of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why we have the title. Not because we've earned it or done anything special. We've done it because Christ has drawn us to it. And we see a couple of things that are particular of importance. First, that we're a member of Christ by faith. So again, this is based on what we believe to be true concerning what Christ has done for us and the means by which he has revealed himself to us in his word. But here's the second one that we want to really focus on today. I'm a member of Christ by faith and thus share in his anointing. So the te scripture teaches here that we actually share in the anointing of Jesus, that we do what we do as believers, not because of our own strength or our own ability or our own authority, which we have none of any of that. We do it rather because of Christ and because of the anointing of him, Christ's anointing, an anointing in which we share. And you say, well, wait a second, Tom. Jesus is the son of God. How do you, how do you share in his anointing? Well, actually, let me show you where we get this from. This comes, this comes from 1 John chapter 2, verse 27. This is a text. This is a promise. This is a declaration that John makes in his first epistle. And look what the word says here. 1 John 2, 27. As for you, the anointing you receive from him remains in you, and you do not need anyone to teach you. But as his anointing teaches you about all things, and as that anointing is real, not counterfeit, just as it has taught you, remain in him. So my friends, you see what this means for us. Not that we're doing this on our own strength, not that we're doing this on our own ability, not that we're doing this by our own authority, not at all. We're doing this under Christ. Christ leads and directs and strengthens and gives us the desire and the, and the, and the motivation and the strength and the ability uh, to do what we do. We serve him. We serve our king who rules over us and directs our every step. And so in the end, we'll see an ultimate victory. And we'll see the victory over the various problems and struggles and difficulties of our life, not because of anything we do, not because we're wonderful. We do this because the anointing of Christ lays upon each believer. Those who come to Christ and trust in Christ by faith operate under the anointing of Jesus. And the anointing of Jesus is powerful indeed.